Welcome back to the class on electrical machines too. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the traveling and cogging. These are the two phenomena you can observe when you are using a deep-phase induction motor. So first, let me start with a traveling. See, this is the stator winding of a induction motor. This is rotor winding. The squirrel case induction motor, so the rotor bars are short circuited. The three statements are taken outside from the stator. For this stator, we are giving the three phase supply. Whenever you are giving the three phase supply, the constant flux which is rotating in a space, nothing but the air gap between the stator and the rotor. If you observe this flux, this is the constant flux. But practically, this flux is a sinusoidal flux, but it is not a pure sinusoidal flux. Suppose here, if you take at this place, if you take the north pole, at this place, if you take the south pole, from this point to this point, this area is representing the north pole. Again, this area is representing the south pole. This flux is not uniformly distributed. Non sinusoidal waveform. This non sinusoidal waveform will be rotating in a space whenever we are giving a three phase supply to the scatter line. It has been observed that the squirrel case type induction motor has a tendency to run at a very low speed compared to the synchronous speed. This phenomena is nothing but a traveling. The resultant speed is nearly 1 by 7 of the synchronous speed. So this is the phenomena of rotating the rotor of a three phase induction motor nearly equal to the 1 by 7 of the synchronous speed. That phenomena is nothing but a so why exactly this is happened in case of induction motor means? See the air gap flux is not a pure sinusoidal. So according to Fourier series, it is consisting only the hard harmonics that is the third and fifth and seventh, ninth, eleventh, so on, along with the fundamental. If we observe the waveform here, this is the actual waveform of the flux in an air gap. This is the actual wave. This is not a pure sine wave. See here, this is almost a constant. In the same manner in this area also it is almost a constant. According to Fourier series, whenever it, this waveform is symmetrical about the x-axis, it does not consist in any even order harmonic. It consists in only the odd order harmonic that is a 1, 3, 5, 7. The 1th harmonic is nothing but a fundamental component. Other than the fundamental, the remaining components are nothing but harmonic. So, because of this harmony, it is only creating a heat in the action motor. Next, if you see the third harmonic. Third harmonic is nothing but a, it is a component of the flux. It has to complete the three cycles within the one cycle of the fundamental. This is the fundamental component. This is a pure sine wave. It is a fundamental component because this frequency is equal to the actual flux frequency. This is third harmonic. The frequency of the third harmonic is three times the fundamental component. The magnitude also will be reduced by three times when compared to the fundamental. The same manner, if you see the fifth harmonic component of a flux, the frequency of the fifth harmonic component of flux is 5 times the fundamental, the magnitude will be reduced by 5 times when compared to the fundamental. The same manner, 7th harmonic, the frequency of the 7th harmonic flux is 7 times the fundamental flux, this is the fundamental component, nothing but amplitude, this amplitude will be 1 by 7 times the fundamental amplitude of a flux. So, along with the fundamental, it is consisting the third harmonic, fifth harmonic, and seventh harmonic, and ninth harmonic, eleventh harmonic, so on. If you neglect the third harmonic, if you observe only the fifth and seventh harmonic, the fifth harmonic will be rotating in a opposite direction when compared to the fundamental form. So, because of the fundamental flux component, the flux is rotating in this manner, what is shown in here figure. Because of fifth harmonic, whatever flux is created, that will be rotated in opposite direction. 
compared to the fundamental because of some of the harmonic flux it will be rotating in a same direction of the fundamental flux so the net flux produced on a router that is equal to the fundamental component plus third harmonic component plus fifth harmonic component and seventh harmonic now here we are neglecting the third harmonic component we are considering only the fifth and seventh harmonic component the torque produced by the seventh harmonic reaches its maximum positive value just below the 1 by 7 of the synchronous speed at this point the slip is higher that we can see in the slip torque axis of induction motor with the fundamental flux and the fifth harmonic flux and the seventh harmonic so first we have taken the x axis on the x axis we have taken the slip again we have taken the y axis this is the positive slip where s equal to 1 on the y axis we have taken the torque this is the boundary for the negative or uh, negative slip because of the fundamental flux how the torque is developed in this already we have seen this characteristic this is the fundamental torque so whatever the torque is developed in induction motor because of the fundamental flux that is nothing but a fundamental torque that is shown in the figure now the red line this is nothing but a torque developed in induction motor due to the fifth harmonic flux next we are going to draw the torque developed in induction motor due to the seventh harmonic flux this is seventh harmonic now we are at every point of the slip we are adding the fundamental component and the fifth harmonic component and the seventh harmonic component so that we are getting the resultant torque development in induction motor so this is the resultant torque development in induction motor if we observe this graph at this point it has a the slip is higher now on this graph if we draw the low torque the low torque is intersecting the fundamental fundamental torque at this point as well as the, the resultant torque at this point at this point and as well as at this point this point is stable point that we have taken as a a the speed at this point that is equal to nx by c whenever we are giving the supply the flux is creating the flux is consisting of the harmonic so that the speed of the motor is not crossing this one it is also stable point this phenomena of running a rotor of induction motor at a speed nx by 7 is nothing but a crawling this is happen only due to the harmonic presence next cogging of a index so this is the stator of induction motor these are the stator of slots sometimes it is happen because of a low supply voltage but the main reason for starting problem in a motor is because of a cogging in which the slots of the stator gets locked with a rotor slot when the slots of a rotor is equal in number with the slots in a stator they align themselves in a such a way that both faces to each other and at this stage the reluctance of the magnetic path will be very very lesser there is attractive force will be acting between the stator slots as well as the rotor so here the stat this is the stator slot this is rotor slot both are aligned in the same axis so whenever you are giving the three phase supply to the stator wire and the flux is creating which is always trying to pass only through the low reluctance area this is a low reluctance area so there is a magnetic locking between the stator teeth as well as the rotor teeth if that magnetic locking force is more than the starting torque of induction motor then the induction motor is not ready to start the by itself the harmonic frequency coincide with a slot frequency due to the harmonics presented in a supply voltage then causes a short modulation as a result of it fogging will be this characteristic is also known as a magnetic teeth locking of a induction motor the fogging can be easily solved by adapting a several methods like the number of slots in a rotor should not be equal to the number of slots in a stator next skewing of a rotor slot that means the stacks of a rotor is arranged in a such a way that 
it's angled with the axis of the rotation. So thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel. So that I'm always welcome to answer all your questions.